drop, pin and drop. I know this was a really difficult time for you because nobody likes to disappoint their mom, right? And you said uh, before that your mom told you if you go to prison, she won't visit you. So you're in prison. And uh, what was it like for you in the beginning? And how did you end up using your time eventually? It was. Man, it was. You know, it, it's crazy because when I first went in there. It felt like it felt cool at a moment because I walk in, everybody, oh, Temp is here, Temp is here. I was, I was the, 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 the correctional officers were treating me like a king. Everybody, everybody knew who I was. So I walk in and put it to this way while my trial was, the, before I was waiting for the sentence that I was locked up there, they, um, they had me in the intake. So in the intake, there's no TVs, there's none of that. They're waiting for, they're waiting for the sentencing. So the first day I walk in there, the correctional officer grabs me up and he's like, oh, come with me. So he's like, brings me down a hallway. He's like, walk down the hallway and take a right. And I'm thinking I'm getting beat up. I'm like, damn, this dude's like, um, I hear stories like this. Like there's going to be dudes waiting for me on the other side to beat me up. Like, well, what the heck did I do? And um, so when I turned the corner, it was another CEO that ha happens to be best friends with my brother-in-law. So I'm like relief. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, I thought I was going to get beat up. But he knew I was there, and the lieutenant let him give me a TV. I was the only person in there with a TV. So um, I'm in there watching, like, the NBA, like, games and Dateline and all this stuff, you know, waiting for my sentence. So I, in the beginning, it felt cool. Everybody's showing me love. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the experience, you know, it changed the day I got sentenced. I I made a promise to God. I said, God, if you know, if you don't give me a lot of time, you know, if you if 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 I don't get a lot of time today, like I promise you, the first thing I'll do when I go to the next building, you know, to do my time, like I'm gonna search for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna read your Bible and stuff like that. And that same day when I got transferred, um, they were giving Bible studies downstairs, and from day one I started going to the Bible studies. And then it's crazy, bro, because, you know, you see my life now and you see how much I know about the Bible and, and the life that I live. But the people who discipled me and taught me everything I know were three prisoners that were in there. Like these dudes were there. One of them was there for murder. He was about to walk out. Um, there was an alcoholic that kept violating his parole because he was always drunk. And then the other guy, he was like a drug dealer from... Um, like he did, like he did something in Colombia and got locked up, and then he violated and came in. But these dudes, they knew who I was, and they knew the promise I made to God, and they knew of God. Like they, they had their paths with God. They knew the word. So, bro, these guys were like, "Temp, at eight o'clock every night, we're gonna have Bible study. We're gonna disciple you. We're gonna show you everything about God." And every day, bro, for the whole time I was there, these do dude, these dudes would disciple me. And like, it was because of them, you know, and you will think about it in a world where a lot of Christians are so judgmental, right? They're quick to throw people away because they're sinners. And they like, these dudes were the sinners of sinners. Like they were the, at the top, but they were the ones, they were my pastors. They were the ones that, you know, without a church, they were the ones that were telling me everything about God. So if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here either, man. Well, you know, it's, um... I think that sometimes religion gets uh, misconstrued because it's like when you look at the story of Jesus, right? Like, who was he with, though? Like, you know, he was with the the sinners, right? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I think that sometimes people use religion to cast stones against people. But, like, the Bible really teaches you, like, no sin is greater than another, you know what I'm saying? And nobody yeah. is without sin. So it's uh, it's interesting when you start to talk about some of those like church dynamics of like how like, you know, the gossip or like people criticize other people and stuff, you know, but, you know, we're we're all here, you know what I'm saying? And, then yeah. you know, no one is without uh, fault or anything. But um, I think that also when you receive the word from somebody that is like more of your temperament, some of the things that you've been through and seen, you kind of yeah. receive it better. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you cool, you cool, you cool relate to them. And 
you know, there, you know, when you, when you know the Bible in the real way, where you know, understand that about Jesus, then, you know, these prisoners, they were able to look at me. Like, he was like, you're here for what? For armed robbery? So you're a thief, right? That's what they told me. Yo, you're a thief. You know who Jesus went to heaven the day that he got crucified? Who went to heaven with him? The only person that he took that day with him was a thief, the thief in the cross. You know what I'm saying? So they will use that stuff to make it relatable to me and to impact my life. So I took that, you know, it's different. A lot of people grow up in the church, so they grow up thinking that they're just good, everybody else is bad. I had it the other way around. I knew I was a mess. And I needed right. grace. I needed. I needed love. I needed. You know, it, love was what led me to Jesus. It wasn't, you know, me figuring out that there's bad people and and, and good people. Because Jesus Himself said, "Where uh, why are you calling me good? The only good one is my Father. You know, my Father in heaven is the only. You know, so I, I learned that from 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 being in prison, man. That we we all sinners, and every sin is is the same. You know what I'm saying? And and the the gospel. What the gospel does is offer an opportunity for you to be in front of the judge and being able to let Jesus take 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 your punishment. Right. That's it. That's it. That's the gospel. You know, I've I've interviewed a lot of people that have been in prison and uh, they've made a drastic change during their incarceration. But I always say, in a place where you had no freedom physically, you found freedom. In your mind, you felt you yeah. I mean? If you found if you found freedom in there, you felt more free in there than you did out here, because out here, put it to this way: even if you even dudes that didn't have religion, there was dudes that were coming in that were homeless, that were drug addicts, that would come to prison and tell me straight up, like I'd rather be here. This is freedom for me because out there, my life is being destroyed. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> 